Okay, I'm back with you, and I kind of want to continue on with this issue that I raised in the last uh, communication, which had to do with the Lord's Prayer and our Father, which art in the heavens. Most of us don't think of it that way. We think of our Father in heaven, but it actually says the heavens. Most of the book of Revelation, when you see the word heaven, it's preceded by the word the, the heavens. So we need to look at this carefully because uh, the way things are shared with us in modern translations don't give us the right picture. One of the more interesting statements in the book of Isaiah uh, is discussing what happens when the Assyrians uh, come in and wipe everybody out and there's nobody left to teach anymore. They're, they're, who are we going to teach? The little babies? And if, if that's the case, then we're going to have to teach them line upon line, precept upon precept. And I remember our pastor uh, used to say, well, that's how we learn, line upon line, precept upon precept. That's if you're a baby. <laughs> that's the only way to teach a baby is a little bit here and a little bit there. But is that the way God wants us to learn? Is that, is that the only way to learn? That's what the uh, seminaries uh, approach is. But what if God has a other, another way that will accelerate our inner man's development so that uh, the last actually become the first because we have a whole new way of learning. In fact, it says the last shall be the first. And what, what are we supposed to make of that? Well, the Lord wants to show us a new way to learn to accelerate the development of our inner man. And it's not line upon line, precept upon precept. It's, it's, it's a bigger picture that we can look at uh, so that we can absorb things quicker, faster, and expedite our development so that we can go into the heavens uh, where our Father's house is. Now, that's an amazing thing to think about. And we're going to get into just how that occurs momentarily, uh, in, in at least the beginning of it today. So uh, I want to take you back to when Moses was at the burning bush. And uh, it, uh, he says there in the presence of the Lord at the burning bush, uh, I know you want me to go down and I'm summarizing it, to talk to Pharaoh, but who am I to go do something like that? You know, it's Pharaoh. And uh, in, in fact, who should I say sent me? And from the burning bush, the voice of the Lord came to tell Pharaoh, I am that I am, or in some renderings, I am and I am. And you're going, well, why didn't he just say, tell him I am sent you to me? Why the two I ams? And uh, later, when Jesus is responding, this is hundreds and hundreds of years later, to the, uh, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, uh, he, he, they were saying to him, are you greater than our father Abraham? And, and Jesus says to them, before Abraham was or even existed, I am. And so here we see Jesus calling himself I am. But you go, well, why didn't you say I am and I am? Why just one I am there? But to Moses, the voice of the Lord was, I tell him I am and I am. Why two I ams to Moses? And why Jesus to the Sanhedrin, one I am? And the answer to that is that is that there are two I am's. There's an there's an I am in the heavens, which is the Father's house, and there's an I am in the heaven above the heavens. Isaiah goes on to talk about the two heavens. Uh, Paul uh, talks about the two heavens. King David says to the Lord, "Why do you have me build this house down here on earth? How are you going to dwell in a house when you don't even uh, when when you can't even live in the heavens, let alone the heavens above the heavens. So the reason for the two I am's is because in the heaven above the heavens is I am, uh, the great I am, and in the heavens, the Father's house, there's an I am. So there's two I am's that are one, and uh, that's the secret name of God. And we need to understand that if we're to get a full orb picture of the fact that uh, uh, 
our, our, our worldview has to be adjusted. So we need to get a right understanding of the heavens as opposed to heaven. And uh, so our destiny initially in, in our way back uh, to where we belong is into the heavens. Have not I called you that I might plant or establish the heavens? So we have to prepare for that. It's it's like I, I mentioned before, it's a, a, a conflict that we have to overcome, or I should say, learn how to overcome in to achieve a, a clean spirit. Uh, uh, the book of Hebrews says, uh, we, we, we live on a holy mountain where men's spirits are perfected. So the perfecting of our spirit occurs as we learn how to live on Mount Zion, which is a metaphor of Mount Hermon. Another whole nother story that I want to share on later. But our spirit has to be perfected and we have to get the big picture. We have to learn that we are to learn not just line upon line but and precept upon precept, but we are to learn from images and pictures uh, so that we can accelerate the development of our spirit. So we live in this situation here on the planet where we have a problem because we're dealing with the inner man and the conflict with the outer man. And not only that, we're dealing with the principalities and powers in the air and a world that's fine. Even though Jesus came to redeem it. Uh, and the reason he is called I am is because he is of the two I am's, the lower I am, the father who became human in the person of Jesus, in the rescue mission of getting these, his people, back to where they belong. So we need to understand the massiveness and the greatness of our rescue by the Lord Jesus Christ in redeeming us and preparing us uh, through the process of the conflict that we're in for the heavens. And we'll, we'll get more into it later.